So today we're going to be covering quite a bit of different notes. We broke it up into three different pieces. Philosophers, the Macedonian Empire, and Alexander the Great. This is going to be 10 questions in our note packets, and it's the second to last day of notes that we're going to be completing. All right. Next week, or at the end of this week, my apologies, we will be um, finishing out the note packet and getting ready for your summatives. Okay. So last class, we talked about the golden age of Athens and how that eventually came to an end with the Peloponnesian War. One other part of the golden age of Athens, and really in Greece in general, is the beginning of philosophers. So who exactly are philosophers? They are, quote, lovers of wisdom. Lovers of wisdom. That's what philosophers mean. They're all about thinking and thought. They believe that the universe has laws based on logic and reason, and that everything follows these laws. That's what philosophers do. That's what they are. They're lovers of wisdom, okay? There are three major uh, philosophers that we are going to be discussing today. There are many, many others in Greek history, but these are the three we're gonna talk about today. Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. So Socrates, as you guys know from the video we watched last week, is known as the father of philosophy. All right, he's kind of the first one to really push back against what the common beliefs were of the people at the time. He believed that absolute standards existed for truth and justice. He was about questioning everything. Um, we get the Socratic method from him, um, which is something you might be using in English eventually. Uh, I kind of use an informal version of it in class when we do notes in person by asking questions, things like that. That's all part of the Socratic method, making you think beyond what is right in front of you. So Socrates, he was very famous. Eventually he was put on trial and he was put to death. Uh, but he had taught Plato most of what he knew. So Plato is a student of Socrates. And what Plato is most famous for is writing the book called The Republic. The Republic. And in his book, The Republic, he put forth this idea of what he believed was the perfect government. And that started, sort of became his whole ideal, is this perfect government that he sets forth in the Republic. All right. Plato then has his student who becomes very famous, and his student is Aristotle. So Aristotle is taught by Plato. Aristotle's big thing was questioning the nature of the world. You'll notice that common theme, that they're all kind of questioning what's right in front of them. That's what philosophy is all about, thinking about the beyond, thinking about why things are the way they are, uh, coming up with an idea, but then having to think about it over and over, well, what about this, what about this, what about this, and putting all these pieces together, that's philosophy, and that's what all began here in this ancient philosophers of ancient Greece, okay? Now, the reason we're doing this with the rest of this is because of who Aristotle taught and we're going to get to that in just a minute because first we have to talk about the father of the guy that Aristotle taught. And that is a man by the name of King Philip II. All right, so King Philip II is the king of Macedonia. Macedonia, M-A-C-E-D-O-N-I-A, -E Macedonia. Macedonia is a country that is just north of Greece, like literally right above Greece. Okay, and it's a very rocky area. So that's Macedonia, a rocky land north of Greece. And he decided he was going to conquer Greece. He had a huge army that were very well trained with the phalanx. All right, so he used his phalanx position and he marched into Greece and he was able to defeat them relatively easily because none of them were able to unite. After the Peloponnesian War, there was a lot of fighting and disagreement between the different city-states and so they weren't able to unite like they did with the Persian War in order to defeat him. So King Philip II was able to conquer Greece relatively easily using that phalanx and using the fact that Greece was not united. After King Philip II takes over Greece, so now he's king of Macedonia and Greece, he goes to his daughter's wedding and he is stabbed to death by one of his former guardsmen. So after this happens, his son decides to take up the throne. 
and his son, his name is Alexander, or as we often hear, Alexander the Great. So Alexander the Great is the son of King Philip II, and he's also someone who was taught by Aristotle. All right, so at the age of 13, Alexander the Great was taught by Aristotle and learned to start questioning the world. And so 35, who was Alexander the Great, son of King Philip II, and a student of Aristotle. Alexander the Great gets his name for a reason. He wasn't that terrible, obviously, considering we call him the Great. He created one of the largest empires and the largest empire at the time by conquering lands all over. And something that he did that was different from other people conquering at the time is that he personally led his troops in battle. He wasn't sitting off in a throne somewhere and letting other people do the fighting. He was at the forefront of these battles. He's the one who went all around conquering these lands, um, which made him really well known and also kind of beloved by his people because he also treated them well. He treated the people well. He brought them out of slavery, um, things like that. So the first thing he did was follow his father's wishes of wanting to conquer the Persian Empire. So the Persian Empire is pretty much all of this land that's like the Middle East into India and parts of China that are all east of Greece. That's where the Persian Empire is. So Alexander sets off to do that. And he does so by going into small battles all throughout the area and repeatedly winning them over and over and over again. He then goes into Egypt and he captures Egypt, creating the city of Alexandria after himself. Right? Then he went to the Persian king and the Persian king was so scared of him that he fled. And eventually that Persian king was murdered by some of his own as well later on. So as Alexander the Great is conquering, he conquers Persia. Then he also conquers Egypt and India, India and parts of Central Asia. So now he has this huge area of land all under his control. Sadly, however, on his way back to Greece to finally rule over his empire, he dies. Natural causes by like the desert. He wasn't even killed in battle after all of this. And so after his death, there was a lot of fighting about who is going to take over this huge, vast kingdom. And what ends up happening is three men come together and they split the empire into thirds. All right, so they empire of Alexander the Great is split into three pieces. The first piece being run by Antigonus, and he takes over the areas of Macedonia and Greece. Then you have Ptolemy, who takes over Egypt, and you have Seleucus, who takes over what was like the old Persian Empire. And so then those three, though still kind of connected all separately, reign over their own parts of what was Alexander's kingdom. So even though Alexander the Great didn't really reign for very long, his influence goes on forever. I mean, it's 2,000 years later, we're still learning about him. And one thing that's kind of interesting, which we'll talk about next class, is the fact that these three areas, Macedonia, Greece, Egypt, India, that kind of stuff, they come together and they start blending their cultures because of them all being under Alexander's rule, creating Hellenistic culture. And that's what next class is gonna be about. And it's basically the basis of Western civilization. The reason we are who we are today is because Alexander went and unified that whole area. All right, so he is truly Alexander the Great for a reason. He was a great conqueror. So just to kind of recap for you guys, philosophers are lovers of wisdom, the three main philosophers you'll be learning about, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, they all believed in um, questioning the world and they all taught each other. So they kind of learned from one another and built on one another. Um, the second thing about the Macedonian Empire is ruled by King Philip II, who then conquers Greece, which is the area south of Macedonia, using the phalanx and the fact that Greece just could not be united until his death when his son Alexander took over um, conquers the Persian Empire and Egypt and India and Central Asia until his death where his empire has been split into three, paving the way to the Hellenistic culture that takes place. Okay, um, I know I went through that a little quickly, 
So feel free to go back, rewind, relook at it, all that kind of stuff, and let me know if you have any questions whatsoever.